Well, this is a video to a lovely time, <clears throat> and in general, I guess, as well, because I'm continuing this subject about hard work. Now, I've continued to, to work on my uh, thing, but this week, or really for two weeks, I have... Has it been two weeks or just one? Anyway, this week, let's just say it, this week, I... Um, yeah, I guess. I, um, you know, I limited myself to sort of, you know, poking around the system. I did some things I needed. I had a little thing, but, you know, there were lots of minor things. And I, you know, I just took my time. Because a lovely time, the thing is with programming, I think, um, you know, they work programmers too hard. Um, and, uh, they just like to work them 80 hours and more. It's just crazy. Um, in, the, in the industries where the programmers are motivated to be in, at least. And, um, that definitely is wrong and, and counterproductive. But two weeks worth of time. So, see, I did this for three weeks because I wasn't working, you know, the whole week that way. I was just working on the weekend. So, adding it up, you know. Now, um, that makes too much work in the sense that, uh, you know, I'm also working at work. So, uh, all together it adds up to more than two weeks. But, you know, you can do that too if you have to. It's just that two weeks should be this, uh, because after that, you know, your life needs attention or whatever else. So. Um, if you do it right, you, you don't, you can keep up on sleep, but, you know, there's sort of, your brain gets rattled, right? Um, and this has to be done because of the nature of the work, you know, you can't just always be in doting, you know, puttering around mode in your code. That's what I want to say, puttering around in your code to fix it up and clean it up. You know, sometimes it takes some heavy lifting, you know, and if you have kids, then... You know, that's going to be hard work. Um, yeah, these things are avoidable. But if you want to build something uh, and be constructive, then, yeah, it takes hard work to certain periods. So what I've been saying to him is pointing out that, you know, the idea that all work is negative is, uh, I mean, I don't even want to be uh, coy about it. It's, it's to me, I, it's, I believe that's a, just... Being a slave for thousands of years uh, in an enslaved culture, even if you're not officially a slave, then you know you're gonna get this association. That all work is slave work, you know, and you just want a kind of relief, a heaven, a relief of leisure all the time. But you know, um, you can escape that mindset even while you're still a slave, and. Um, I mean, there's a couple experiences in my life. I mean, one, I worked hard for free, you know, and as a kid I was really into, when I got into computers, you know, I volunteered to do these things in my whole life, and non-computer things as well, you know, it's like if you're interested in politics, you volunteer and you, you work for it and you dedicate yourself to it, and they give you a chance and their time to teach you what's what's up with the with what's going on in that thing and so you work hard to help out you make sure it's a net positive for them you know uh it's not a slave thing that that version and um and doing that i've gotten experience that also got me work and it was a livelihood i mean i don't have a direct career off of any degree or anything like that. Now, are we all still house slaves and, you know, in some sort of wage slavery? And Yeah, I totally believe that. I've said that before. But trashing the idea of, of working hard, no, it's more like Robert Heinlein had a good idea that, you know, inventions come from laziness, from not wanting to work. Good inventions and modernization. Like plumbing, you know. Plumbing is indoor plumbing is the laziness of not wanting to have to go get water from the well. And if you install your own plumbing, 
it's still like that. It's very rewarding hard work because then you sit in your house and you're thinking all that work. Now I'm just sitting here and turn on the faucet. Part of the problem is a wealth separation on the slave plantation world where the people that get the running water don't do the hard work to install it. You know, I'm a big fan of do it yourself. I, I you know, you can't do everything yourself, especially if you're specializing or you have to work in something else. But, you know, you can still choose a subset and have a lifestyle of <coughs> doing a variety of work um, for yourself. And it depends on the results of the work. I mean, mowing the lawn, not a huge reward for me most of my life because I like jungly looking things. So doing that is like a... Sometimes I've had to do it because I'm renting. It's like, well, I'm supposed to keep this a certain way. Mostly I let it, let it get really shaggy. But with my kids at certain ages, and recently it's like, oh, well, not recently, but the last few years, it's like, oh, okay. Yeah, I like seeing it all mowed down because then they go play on it. You know, and that makes it rewarding. When I was rewarding, it's let it grow shaggy. So you have to learn what your own personal motivators are for work. And you know, there's a time, there's, it's all timing. And there's probably a time in life where it's just like, well, from now on, I'm gonna try to kind of cruise, you know, of retirement. But you react to the very idea of any hard work voluntarily taken for things that might be productive as if, no, there's no such thing as productive, it's just slave labor. And I disagree with that. And you're ignoring that I said I think a 20-hour work week would be a good standard work week. Is that too high? Why don't you talk about that? Is that too, still too high or too low? Or I mean, I'm willing to... But anyway, we got a little testy, you know. I think it's good. It's an exception that proves the rule. I, I, I don't think it has to be a, a big deal. <laughs> because um, frankly, when that kind of stuff threatens to occur, it's, it's just better to, to go with and see how that, that works. But... Um, but of course I do recognize we've had a long civil, with all of our many disagreements, we've had a long civil uh, <laughs> relationship and an ability to agree still on the things we agree about, which I, I value that. So I, I think we're both taking a chance to express some, you know, I've worked hard and that's, I would be screwed if I hadn't. And yes, there's a house slave aspect to it, but I'm not copping for that I just worked for the man, you know. <coughs> choking up but um, obviously that proves I did now um, I don't think I just did that I definitely did that I can tell you I made a lot of money more money for them than me but money wasn't the only thing I wanted you know I mean uh, I mentioned giving up the these unvested options um, but you know there's a lot to that I went there and you know, m money wasn't the main thing. I told them I had some sick leave because I had gotten sick a little bit, but I wouldn't work in 100-hour weeks and stuff for this place, which I knew I took that on, so that was okay. But after I achieved this stuff, just working incredibly hard for like six months, I wanted to take a vacation, four-week vacation, and they were just hassling. I think I ended up taking three weeks, and they ended up just hassling me about it. And I'm like, are you kidding? I've worked. Okay, so... Also, then I came back, and then I got a little sick, and they're trying to, um, and mind you, all of that vacation was vacation time. It wasn't an issue about that, or you willing not to be paid, and it was a matter of that. And I worked so much, it's like, well, I need to recharge. How do you think I do that? I got to recharge. And I had a bad attitude about it. I came back, and then there was also uh, sick leave on there. The, I overcharged sick leave. I'd gotten sick. And so... Uh, I was like, look, you got to uh, just zero out my sick leave because I worked too many extra hours to owe you guys time. That's just insulting. And they wouldn't do it. See, I could ask for money. I could ask for all kinds of things. But I just wanted that because it showed a certain decency that I thought their attitude was lacking. I don't like that. And what have you done for me lately? You don't get to recharge. It's, it doesn't make sense. And um, so they flaked on that and I quit. And they were shocked because they thought they had this money over me, which they didn't. And, uh, you know, it might even have been a mistake. I mean, maybe there's reasons I should have or could have stayed, but I was just, that was my 
that was my system and the way I took it. And because, and I know I could ask for money, and I thought that ahead of time, because then they were like, oh, we'll promote you and give you a lot more money, and this and that and the other thing. They didn't want me to leave, but, um, and, you know, they had various reasons. It was semi-critical. But I did contract for them for a while, three months after to make it smoother. I didn't want to totally destroy them, but I wasn't going to stay there. And, um, because I would have rather seen that they could concede to something non-monetary if all they can think about is money. So, you know, I maintain a claim that, you know, you can, even, even in this system, you know, you, you can force other issues into the system. And you can see, because there's other employers who understand this and, and are happy, they're like, we just have to treat you nice and let you recharge. You don't want to pull us over the barrel and you're not just wanting more money and you're not trying to boss somebody out or around or get somebody fired. You just, okay, great. So I look for those kind of people and uh, they do exist. You know, I don't knock not working at all. I totally value slacking. It's like, if you say you like hard work, why do people always think that Bod, that missed me, and he wants to work so hard and dies in a couple months. No, it's like I love slack too. Go down to the beach, read, take a nap. I mean, I'm into that too. Why does it have to be one or the other? Now, oh, not a really bum, don't ever want to work. No, it's like a little balance. You know, and it's partly what age you are, where you're in your life, and what you're interested in. But yeah, I believe everybody should find what really sparks them, you know, what really makes them get into something and find ways to be productive and do the hard work because, you know, just learning a musical instrument or something. Sometimes there's things that's like, oh, I'm not gonna, I can, to do what I want to do, I have to figure out this thing, some, some aspect of this. And I'm gonna have to think hard and work hard and oops, I got sores on my fingers before the callus is formed. And it's like, that's a bad thing? I don't think so. So, yeah, but I will cop to have cooperating a little bit in the uh, in, in commerce, but uh, I have made conscious decisions to you know, about what I've chosen to be involved with. So you don't really know, but um, but in the sense that you could just say, well, just in general, it has to be. Well, yeah, I mean, I guess that's true. Um, in general, to a certain degree, applying to everybody, therefore including very distantly and remotely me. But whatever, I'm not going to debate that aspect. Uh, the issue is that, yeah, I admit about the house slave kinds of concepts. In fact, I pointed that out myself many times in my life. I think on YouTube sometimes, though I don't talk that much about politics. But more and more, this is a trend to do that more and more. I political blog before YouTube. It was a refreshing to just talk about philosophy. I think politics is like people need to get their philosophy right or their politics will just continue to be crazy. So I'm not just into chit chatting politics with people. I'd rather chit chat philosophy, which has a, an effect on their politics. Anyway, cheers.